thank you very much for joining this SFE event. Um, we're very glad that we're still still able to do some. Um, I just wanted to talk to you about a couple of other things that are happening with the SFE while we're waiting for some more people to join. Um, we recently sent out a request for any um, any members who would like to present a project of interest to us. Um, that went out to all members recently. We'd really appreciate uh, any any interest. As you know, we're not able to do the competition this year. So we thought it'd be a really nice idea to invite people to to you know showcase some projects of interest. You're very welcome to be joined by somebody from industry as well if you wanted them to present as well. So please do come back to us. We ideally would like to present one every month. So it'd be great if you'd like to, um, to offer to do that. Um, in addition, just to let you know that um, Manchester are hosting a, a, a little hub event, as we call them now, rather than regions. Um, and if anyone's interested, that's on the 9th. And I understand Darren Clare um, is hosting that. So um, if you do want to get in touch with him, please do so if you want to join. I believe they're going to be at the Refuge Bar in Oxford Street starting at six. But I would imagine with um, with numbers, they might want to know if people are joining. So please do let let Darren Clare know. Thank you. So um, that aside, welcome. Um, I'm going to start because I know we, we had a lot of people sign up for this. So hopefully people will join. Um, could I kindly in, in, introduce Leandro Heine? Who's a, senior Hi, yeah. who's a senior associate at Thornton Tomasetti. Um, and we're very pleased that he's going to be presenting on, uh, is it Iona Rose House? Ilona. Ilona. Ilona, Ilona, Ilona Rose. Excuse my pronunciation. So on that note, I'm going to um, put myself on mute and hide myself. Please do put any questions you have in the chat. And we'd be very pleased to answer the questions at the end. So, uh, Leandra, I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Nisha. Hello, everyone. Thanks for the intro. Uh, first, I have no professional photography, so apologies for the quality of some of the images. Both were taken during site visits with a phone. Uh, but anyway, so this presentation um, is a summary of our involvement during five years as facade engineers with the Lona Rose House. I'll show around 50 slides, uh, starting from developed design through technical design, procurement, testing, fabrication, and the installation. Basically, on the bespoke unitized system, which can be seen in the picture here above. The project is basically complete, shell and core and is being fitted out as we speak. So if you are in London, I encourage you to go visit. Unfortunately, you won't be able to go into the building until next year. So let's start. A few words firstly about who Thornton Thomas City are and what we do. We are a global engineering solutions firm. Here you can see a few facts and figures about us. I'm based in the London office, which has structural engineering, facade engineering, and sustainability stuff. We are part of the Europe region. As part of the engineering team, I work closely with colleagues in our New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles offices. But like many engineering companies, uh, we assemble cross-practice teams according to the projects and the clients. Um, sectors we operate in here you can see engineering practice we deliver on uh, we are perhaps best known globally for our structural work uh, on tall and super tall buildings uh, some sports stadia uh, but more and more into the 21st century we work on driving change and innovation across all of our industry more so now with the transition into a low carbon economy So here we are. Uh, our engagement started in 2016 uh, post planning. Soho Estates is our client and the developer. Uh, these are the CGI's matte architecture produced at the time. Uh, 
we have clear design intent and a client keen to materialize a flagship building for their business in London Soho in the theater and film district. This is um, Charing Cross Road, a few st steps away from Tottenham Court Road Station and the new Crossrail Hub on Oxford Street. Uh, a few facts and figures on the building. Here we can see a bird's eye view, a CGI from the east, showing the relationship with the, the taller buildings on Charing Cross Road uh, behind here. And the characteristic terraces for all the office floors this is all the, this is basically an office building, uh, which step down towards Greek Street, is Greek Street on the Soho side. The development includes a restoration of the grade two listed uh, building on 14 Greek Street, which I think is this one. Uh, and next door is uh, 1213 Greek Street here. There are eight affordable housing flats part of the scheme. Um, here you can see the design team, of course, so estates uh, client, project team, uh, DML uh, project manager, Matt Architecture, architect and principal designer, tier structures, Thornton Reynolds, MEP services, TT facade engineering, that's me and my team, Reef, uh, facade access and maintenance, affinity for fire, uh, Sandy Brown Acoustics, uh, Townshend Landscape, eight associates for sustainability, Studio 29, lighting designer, uh, Midmark Security, and EPG worked on the basement. Uh, during the construction phase, which we'll see a bit later on, we have Sir Rod McAlpine as construction manager, and the, all the basic facade package was given to GIG for. from this early uh, stage three, a key perspective of the rounded corner looking south uh, along Charing Cross Road to the left. And here we have a cutout of Manette Street uh, to the right. You can see the stepping down volume again towards the lower height Soho uh, here. This sort of base corner, um, the ground floor on level one, we have A1 retail onto Charing Cross. We have the main entrance here with this sort of portal on, on Monette Street and here behind the Mews, uh, which is now called James Court, which has uh, restaurants and cafes or will have soon. This sort of cantilevering corner uh, provides this a, a more generous sidewalk uh, for the otherwise congested pedestrian traffic, which sort of connects here through Charing Cross Road to the theater district. Uh, the main body, as I said before, levels two and six, is this uh, terracotta-like panelling uh, with punch windows. Uh, we have the set back mansard levels here, seven and eight, uh, with more office uh, with this metallic grey panelling. Um, and here above this little cutout, we see sort of uh, the view again from the east and the uh, basement is three basement levels where Warner Brothers will establish their post-production facilities and the plant. This has a sort of a generous uh, a skylight, uh, which we call the spotlight, uh, which was also engineered um, for this project, but um, I'll touch on at some other occasion. Looking more into the facades, we had originally identified 14 facade types together with Matt Architecture. We worked on all of them. Today we're looking, as I said, on what we call EWSO1, which is this unitized, which was uh, basically split into these three material finishes. We call them the P41, 21, and 49. So the P41 is this terracotta-like finish, which was possibly GRC at this early stage. Uh, well, this is a more prominent material. Then we have the, these uh, sort of, uh, three gradient grays paneling uh, and the dark metallic base you can see here. This is all, uh, well, we call it now brass, patented brass, uh, and effectively that, that is what it uh, ended up being. 
moving on. Uh, still early stage three. Uh, we have this three meter wide unit uh, and 3.85 meter high, spanning floor to floor. We have this concave 1.2 meter wide panel with uh, this the rose pattern, which is obviously characteristic of this uh, project and was specifically designed by Matt. We have a 1.2 meter wide window, floor to ceiling, uh, see, see the office inside, and the more the convex 0.6 meter wide panel with a, with a smooth appearance. So you already see these, this play of depths between the shapes and the textures uh, together with the rose panel. Looking at the design intent of the base, to have a glimpse of the other facade types, we have the pedestrianized Manette Street here, connecting directly west to Greek Street and Soho Square, which is known as the Bar District. Um, we have the entrance here to James Court on the left with the cafes, uh, which is also the entrance to Warner Brothers behind. Uh, so facade assemblies here as well, the gold scoop, we call it, uh, together with a larger format, uh, darker rows here, and the tiled scoop, we also call it the tiled scoop. Uh, below the, this lower brick punch window buildings, which is also part of the office development. So during Reba stage three, basically TT scope was uh, here as is listed out. Uh, we basically assisted matte architecture with everything cladding. Uh, we coordinated structure, MEP, fire acoustics, access and maintenance. Uh, we look into this in the next slides. So we obviously produce a sketchbook to study this unitized curtain wall with what we call clip-on finishes. It was very clear from the design intent and the CGIs, which this was a way to go. So the concept clearly was to have this simple large format uh, unitized system, uh, externally glazed uh, with modular and fully off-site manufactured uh, finishes. Here we can see a plan detail. Uh, we looked at the thermal and structural performance of these uh, elements, due to some preliminary sizing. Uh, with this sort of flat, more standardized unit, get this consistent thermal and weather line, which is simple and cost effective. It's easy to manufacture and transport. And then we have the freedom of these more clip-on finishes, which are curved, can be hollow, uh, so we have these typically convex and concave 2D and also 3D shapes, uh, depending on the panel type. Again, early stage three, typical slab edge detail. You can see the steel frame for the building and the composite uh, floor slab. Typically fire and acoustic stops at every floor level. Uh, spandrel panel with just a some simple folded aluminum sheets to give the depth. Uh, note that we place the stack joint position slightly below the, the slab. This is not the ideal position. You know, the brackets become a bit more complex and more expensive. Uh, but at the time we thought this was a way to go. Uh, but this stack arrangement sort of protected these projecting finishes, right? Uh, you can see the curtain uh, box, the roller box is separate to the system at this stage. If we look more closely at the clip-on panel options, uh, it's still not quite clear how we, these panels would be fixed on, but so we have some preliminary ideas. Uh, it obviously depending on the material itself, uh, the need for, I don't know, stiffeners or um, subframes. You typically want all these sort of projecting finishes which are quite deep uh, to be directly fixed to the mullions which is some more, more direct load path uh, but in this case the geometry proved to be challenging uh, you can see here at the end to try and reach the mullion from here was kind of complex so we have this intuitive first step of these uh, fixing arrangements um, you also have to be able to remove these finishes uh, in case of damage. 
uh, for example, from maintenance or external uh, damage because these are present at the terraces where there's people uh, without compromising the stability or the weather tightness of the utilized air equipment wall behind. Uh, a first tab at what would be a GRC option, which you can see with this hollowed out uh, void former fins, or a UHPC, which was one of our first materials of choice. And we can go into the materials now. So early days, uh, we were very keen to explore this uh, thin concave and convex panels for the, the P41s uh, in UHPC, which is ultra high performance concrete. Um, Matte architecture actually 3D printed the rose panel at their office, and this could then be copied with gypsum or rubber molds uh, to test the shapes uh, and do samples, coloring to test the sharpness. We looked into this with uh, Thorpe Precast uh, here in the UK, very versatile material which can be poured into molds. Um, at a later stage, we actually convinced the client uh, to pay for real scale samples. So you can see these here. This is a full size performance mock up to check on the color consistency of the three shades of the, the red, the pink, and the buff. <clears throat> This happened later, as I said, in stage four. But you can see that we already had the first tests of the integrated LED lighting, uh, which we did, uh, designed together with Studio 29. Um, everybody was very happy. I mean, we were very happy with this sharp pattern, and the sort of terracotta-like um, effect. Unfortunately, the UHPC was V'd out at the end of stage four, so we'll come up uh, onto this later. Again, during early, early stage three, we looked into a cast metal option for the metallic, the top part of the building, as you remember, and the bottom part, the gray and the black. Uh, very attractive finish uh, you can achieve with cast metal. Um, these were done at FSC Foundry in Essex with a sand casting. They took uh, the basic pattern and reproduced it in. Um, uh, gypsum, I believe, and then they did the sand casting mold process. You can see here the process of the smelting and the pouring of the cast aluminium and the final product. Uh, these are very beautiful, but eventually disregarded because of the practicalities of producing the large panels. Um, I still encourage to explore this option. There's uh, other good examples of new. Uh, cost panel architecture in London, which you can visit. So next up, we looked at pressed or stamped metal. Uh, again, this was a very attractive idea because of the lightness to be able to produce those panels at the top of the building. So we contacted uh, Felitz in Germany. Uh, they have the largest press in Europe, so they could manufacture the big 1.2 by 3.8 meter panels. Uh, we can see the rain screen roses in different materials. Uh, these are stainless steel, um, galvanized steel as well in different thicknesses. Uh, we can also do this in aluminum, we'll see this shortly, and in brass. This is one of the first prototypes of the dark patinated brass panels, which was uh, later used production of the visual mock-up. So as an alternative to the UHPC, we were asked to revisit the GRC uh, and also the PPC options. Uh, well, polyester powder coating, as you know, is uh, cheap and very versatile. Um, here we have, uh, well, I'm sure you can probably tell here on the left, this is uh, PPC on aluminium, I believe, because of a smooth smoothness, this shape. And here on the right, near zoom, uh, close up here, of the glass fiber reinforced concrete with a 15 millimeter depth relief. Uh, the GRC uh, is sprayed into molds and it can be post-treated. So this one particularly has this 
slight uh, sand blasting sort of porous surface. This rougher finish was actually preferred by the client and the architects. Uh, so this is what eventually made its way into the specification. It, the GRC uh, is also looks it looks different, dry and wet, and this was attractive as well to the client, which we we we'll see this more of this later. Um, let's see next one. Uh, finally, ceramic tiles. Matte Architecture also designed the tiles. These are around 12 centimeters tall, I believe. Uh, originally 3D, 3D printed uh, at Matte Architecture offices. Samples were uh, obtained from Cumela in Catalonia, which is a well-known uh, ceramic supplier. Uh, Cumela was then engaged uh, by uh, the construction manager and Zerelmi in this case, which produce uh, the, the tiled uh, patterns that we see here and the scoops which we can see on James Court and the Muse at the back of the building. Right, uh, so we work with Matt and other consultants on stage four during 2017. Uh, at the end of stage four, Sir Robert McAlpine was appointed as construction manager. Uh, they managed uh, 31 trade packages for the Shell and Core. Uh, we worked on technical and detailed facade design, uh, integration of the LEDs and the facade performance spec. This is our classic <laughs> TT spec cover. Uh, with SRM on board also on the facade tender process and appraisal and on the value engineering. So with regards particularly to the spec, we went out to the facade tender with a revision 7 in February 2018. The tender negotiation and VE process happened during 2018. By the time we issued for construction, uh, we were at revision 10 in April 2019. So quite a lengthy process. Let's look a bit at the uh, technical facade design. As I said, this was done in-house during 2017 uh, together with Matt Architecture. Uh, without a PCSA or a contractor on board, uh, we enlisted the help of Gerd Hönecke. So special thanks to Gerd if you're watching. Uh, this just shows an assortment of the uh, drawings uh, produced. On top of these GAs and schedules, uh, Matt Architects produced over 180 facade detail drawings, uh, scale 125 and 125s, uh, 69 of which were specific to the unitized EWS01 system. You can see above here a complete schedule of all the panels. They are left and right-handed panels. Um, Matt uh, made an effort to uh, rationalize the amount and variety of panels without compromising the, the complex massing of the building that we saw earlier. This sort of prolific production allowed a very smooth tender process uh, when SRM was appointed as the construction manager. Um, let's look a bit at the typical details produced during stage four. We have the three meter wide panel uh, in section. The nosing has evolved a bit, has become wider here with a taller spandrel. We can see already in plan here, I'm not sure you can see this properly, yeah, the integration of the LED lighting for the concave panel. Uh, we have an integrated light box here, a blind box uh, in the two window transom. Uh, following um, Guidance, we integrated cavity barriers into these uh, cavities behind the rain screen panels. Uh, these were later removed during design uh, because we basically uh, managed to not have them. Uh, we have an anti drumming finish for the sills uh, and the nosings, and the integration of the facade restraint pins. Uh, as all, well, these, uh, 
buildings with unitized curtain wall, which is externally glazed. We need a cradle, a building maintenance unit, which hangs on the outside of the building from the roof. Uh, needs these uh, restraints. Uh, let's be faster then. The terrace parapets, which are structurally integral to the unit below, uh, these can be GRC or metal. They are essentially hollow with a thermally broken subframe. Uh, the coping here has the integrated lightning strike plates. We worked in the careful detailing of the roof, the waterproofing and the finishes, uh, including different levels for the landscaping of the terraces. There's a back panel hook on system here which integrates uh, other cabling uh, like emergency lighting and alarms for the terraces. Moving on to the roof level slab edge detail, we have the BMU building maintenance unit tracks very near the edge. So a complex detailing around the stubs which penetrate the slab. Uh, so there's some complex waterproofing here to take care of. Uh, there's special brackets for these top units uh, directly to the beam, uh, not to compromise the waterproofing at the roof. And finally, the first floor onto Charing Cross Road and Manette Street has a, a massive, and you can see this tapering steel truss. This is the, the top cord and the bottom cord uh, to, to construct the cantilevered corner. So we needed to specifically look at the, the shorter brass finish panel. Here to the left, we have the head at the level two slab, and here to the right, uh, the base level with a variable height for this cord. The, here you can see the, already the interface with a large format uh, rose uh, panels, which form part of the uh, retail frontage. Here the beginnings of the goal scoop. Moving a bit faster. Also, we also look at the doors to the terraces, uh, which need to be flush thresholds to be accessibility compliant, of course. Uh, they're automated uh, starter tracks with special sills for the terraces and the integration of the terrace finishes. Right, so moving on to Rebel stage five. The TT appointment for stage five was basically as part of a client monitoring, monitoring team, excuse me, with the services listed here. Uh, uh, GIG Facades was appointed in May 2019. Uh, the start on site was July, uh, June, July 2020, which is this picture above. You can see the steel frame uh, finished with a very large spans, slab edges on all the steel work. Uh, and below you can see a picture from maybe a couple of days ago, September, uh, with practical completion, uh, June, July this year. So you can see, you still see the hoarding still there um, because it's been fitted out as we speak. So basically stage five is for us is moving from this to this uh, with all, lots of work with all the team. So uh, GIG facades, as I said, was appointed. They had the GRC UK, which has a, sub, uh, um, a supplier com component uh, for the GRC panels. And pole facades together with fillets, they produce uh, the brass and the steel pattern panels. So uh, let's move on into a few more slides for this. Um, so one of the first things that we did uh, with uh, GIG is to go up to the GRC UK factory in Doncaster uh, for the GRC selection. We see here the range sample for the, the red, the pink and the buff. Uh, very important to establish uh, because of the, you know, GRC is a base concrete based material to understand the limitations and the, the possibilities of working with um, this material. The client was very keen to be able to have a, a very consistent finish, uh, accepting the variabilities, right? We also submitted uh, smaller samples of these GRC uh, units to accelerated weathering. 
they were put into a chamber with a hot and cold, damp, dry and dark UV cycle to check the color consistency over time. Because of course, these colors were specifically produced for this project and we hadn't uh, had knowledge of similar GRC for a project of this type before. So we want to make sure that um, the design intent was achieved to, to completion. Moving on uh, to the visual mockups. Uh, this is visual mockup number one, which was commissioned. Uh, this was manufactured by GIG at their rig in Austria. This picture is from October 2019. Visual mockups, of course, verify the design intent, the joints, the shapes, the glass reflection. Every nook and cranny can be explored. Uh, uh, obviously the client for sign off of materials and finishes. And because the GRC panels were already uh, engineered for the performance mockup, which followed, we were able to conduct preliminary impact testing uh, on the GRC. For us, it's, it's very important that um, this GRC bespoke design was thoroughly tested uh, to all sorts of actions. Uh, let's move on. Another couple of visual mock-ups which were commissioned to check the lighting and shadow effects. You can see the first floor panel uh, with the brass and the rain screen finishes, uh, the patinated brass. This also allowed GIG and their supply chain to, have to check the logistics um, uh, and preview any risks for the manufacturer and install because obviously we are running on a very tight schedule as with all projects. Moving on, uh, by March 2019, we have the performance mock-up, which we selected uh, sort of with a mix of the GRC on the bottom and the PPC aluminium to the top with a cross cruciform uh, joint. So this is two floors, obviously. Uh, we, well, uh, the independent testing authority uh, conducted a full CWCD sequence B. So we achieved all of the performance requirements we were after. Uh, this allowed GIG to obtain the evidence of performance to obtain the BSEN uh, standard for curtain walling which is uh, specific to this project, of course. Um, an image here of the impact testing that we conducted additionally on the performance mock-up. Uh, I think we spent a day doing this. We wanted to hit the facade in all manner of shapes and sizes with a, with a simulated cradle uh, and the results were very good. We also conducted a BMU anchor pullout test uh, uh, to check how the, the pins for the restraint cradle would work. So moving on uh, to the GIG design. Uh, so if you remember the drawings from before, we now have the official uh, profiles and system as it was designed and installed on the building. GIG designed uh, together with Wicona, I believe, a bespoke system uh, to accommodate all the sort of the bracketry for the external finishes. Uh, you can see here the cover cap with the integrated LED. This is a framed four-sided cover cap that can be completely removed. We're very pulling out uh, for the glass replacement on the inside. And here you can see as well, uh, not too well, I believe. The GRC panels as uh, manufactured and designed by GRC UK with this uh, stainless steel brackets. So the basic principle is a little picture here. We have the dead load at the bottom with a bes bes bespoke stainless steel bracket, which goes into the panel and fixes to the sideways. Uh, for This is the concave panel. And here we have the pattern uh, 
So sorry, this is a convex one. This is a concave one. Again, the pattern one uh, with a similar arrangement. Let's look at this more in a section, perhaps. Yeah. So again, uh, typical section for the DRC version. Uh, integrated uh, blind box. The LED strip setting now uh, setting out. The LED strips were fitted in the factory. We have the nosing with the integrated uh, BMU pin. And here on this section, you can see that the bottom bracket for the DRC panel or the dead load. Uh, and then this is the top bracket for the restraint load. So you can see this sort of black material here. This uh, is part of the design. Um, is this pin arrangement, uh, which we'll see a few pictures now, uh, to allow the a more exact tolerance between the manufacture of DRC and the installation of the panels on the units themselves. So this allowed a very sort of fine tuning in out uh, to the exact requirements of the jointing of the project. Let's see next one. Yeah, uh, a planned detail of the metal uh, finishes. So you can see the smooth panel curved here, uh, basically hollow with these stiffeners here. And GIG used what we would they call the bayonet system, which is sort of a, a simple hook on um, bracket, which is directly set out on the structural elements and similarly used for this on the sort of right hand side of the pattern panels. The pattern panels were actually manufactured with stiffeners. You can see here, these are the stiffeners. And the material here is a thinner material, which is a special galvanized sheet, uh, which, which gave us the more sharper uh, texture. Uh, and again, these are manufactured and simply can be hooked on and off uh, on site and off site as well. More details of the same in section, uh, hook on panels. Uh, and let's talk a bit about the manufacture and install. So here we have the project in London and the manufacturer on the panels in Austria and the supply chain. So there was this 4,425 square meters of units to be produced. So what the GIG did is hire a facility just outside of London. Uh, we call this sort of the, let's call it the assembly hub, which is in Woolwich. So Paul, uh, could uh, press the panels in fillets and either directly send them to site if needed to the, the assembly hub and GRC then manufactured their panels, which we have the state uh, data here, 613 different GRC panels and then ship them directly to this uh, facility and they could be sort of assembled uh, just in time to go onto the building. So this obviously saved a lot of transport uh, and allowed DIG to do this just in time deliveries deliveries to site uh, because there was there is no space on site uh, for storage. So let's look at what happened there this assembly hub in, just outside London in Woolwich. So the the GRC panels arrived in these stillages. They were offloaded onto the assembly hub floor. Uh, the unitized panels arrived sort of this flat pack without their finishes and they were then uh, this was stood up onto this sort of inverted T frames with one panel on each side. And you can sort of fit out the bracketry in this case for the GRC in the bottom. Uh, you can see how this looks with a bracket on site. Uh, and this is the way of inserting the, these sort of stainless steel inserts to a very precise tolerance. 
sort of GIG together where uh, their design team uh, designed these. Um, not sure what the name to put these. Um, let's let's call them <laughs> the frames for positioning the brackets uh, templates, so to speak. So you can see the holes which are into the nibs already of the GRC panel and the little inserts uh, of stainless steel. And here you can see the finished product. Unfortunately, this is not a very good picture of the panels being lifted directly off from the trucks uh, uh, via the tar crane onto the building. So finally, uh, site visits. We did uh, 18 uh, number of site visits so far. These are the first units installed in July 2020. Uh, let's go through these quickly. Uh, the corner panels here, also unitized, uh, very large format panels. GRC UK fabricated two extra ones, just in case, and the five best panels were selected to go onto the building. Uh, next slide. Uh, by September 2020, we have most of the main facades onto Charing Cross Road and uh, Manette Street uh, with a fully unitized brass paneling here. You can see the array screen here still missing and the view from uh, the back onto uh, James Court. And this just to show the before and after of the P41s. So you can see the this this in this case the units were shipped directly to site without the uh, metal finish, and this could be later uh, hooked on without interfering with the um, the very tight program to for an interior fit out uh, the shell and core. So we have a fully watertight building. Uh, without the necessity of having the finished product. So let's look a bit at the terraces. So here we have one of the finished terraces. I think this is probably level six. Uh, and a work in progress view of the parapet, the view towards Charing Cross Road to the center point. So you can see here the units uh, still missing the GRC copings uh, and the finishes to the terraces. The level seven and eight corner. Uh, very impressive, very, a very large unit, by the way. So uh, a secret which I'm going to only tell to you is that these, this is not an entirely uh, press panel. This is composed of smaller scallops which were uh, assembled together to produce this larger panel. Uh, the result um, is still convincing. And finally, one of my favorite pictures, a uh, view from the Greek Street apartments onto the uh, east facade. You can see here the, the three colors, the red, the pink, and the buff, uh, the plant screen above, and the terraces uh, falling down. Right, so obviously a building in Soho has to be visible, attractive during the day, but also during the night. So this is it, uh, fully lit up and still not fitted out, uh, unfortunately with the hoarding still for the ground levels. Um, and this is basically it. We're now into 40 minutes into my talk. Uh, I'll leave you with a Time lapse. So this is the work which was done uh, by all the team. Uh, two years uh, in one minute. Uh, let's see if this works. Can I? Uh, if I do this, just a sec. Uh, there we go. Right. 
So thanks very much to my colleagues at TT, uh, particularly Aloy Kemp and Veronica Zugarella. Thanks to Matt Architects uh, for the great work. Let's do some more. Thanks to Soho Estates and DML for the continued trust and support. Thanks to the Sir Robert McAlpine team. Um, they obviously have an exceptional understanding of uh, the trade and they were have been great people to work with. Uh, thanks also to the GIG team and the supply chain, including GRC UK, uh, Paul and Felix for the great result and for hosting us uh, when we could actually travel to Germany, uh, which we luckily could do just before uh, uh, lockdown. And this is it. This is the result. Thanks very much. Any questions? <laughs> Please. Andrew, thank you. That to... was, that's, what a lovely project. Um, really, really fascinating because I, th I think it's only when you started going through the detail, you could really see the intricacy of the project itself. And um, I must admit, it, the audience are very quiet today. Has anyone well, they're all muted. <laughs> well, they have, but they're allowed to they're allowed to type a message into the chat and I haven't yeah. seen any. Um, so I'm going to ask a couple of questions because I was uh, Fascinated. In fact, you, you answered one of my questions um, because I was going to ask you about, did you do any testing to check colour fade? Um, one of the first projects I did as a project architect was actually a, a red reconstituted stone. And I know we had to go through so many, so many tests. I mean, this was over 25 years ago now, but um, to see whether it would fade or not. And it was really challenging. The reds and pinks are a really challenging colour um in, in in many different types of materials so so great to see that you did that i i people who know me will know that I'm, I'm i'm a great advocate of testing because you know you might as well get it right up front um one of the other things i wanted to ask you was um the actual metal cladding that was installed later how was that done was that done from um obviously the, the building wasn't scaffolded how how was that actually done how how was that installed yeah, uh, some of the, those panels could, could be manually uh, handled because they're very light, but they mm. use the tar crane to sort of lift them up. The, yeah. the, I'm not sure I got a picture, but uh, can I go back perhaps? Yeah, I could probably go back to, so the, the sort of the logistics, can see here. Uh, the, to the, the, the in and out of the, uh, building site was here, so the, mm -hmm. the trailers could be sort of parked here, and the the user tar crane. Uh, maybe another picture. Yeah, so here you can see the gates. Oh, so okay. trailers went in and out from there, uh, and use a tar crane to directly lift. So you could either lift a stillage onto the terrace and then mm -hmm. work from the terrace, uh, because you can see the the yeah. you can see here the pattern panels are basically on terraces. Okay. So this was easier without the need for scaffolding. Great. I hope that answers your question. That does. And, and I think one other question, I mean, I think, um, oh, here we go. Simon Richards has asked, thank you, Simon. Hello, Leandro, can I ask how the scallops were jointed together on the oversized curved panels without, with, without obvious joints? Yeah, uh, well, I obviously haven't shown that. <laughs> the secret picture of the system for behind, yeah. So they actually interlock and they have some very discrete rivets which are color matched. So if you ever get to go onto the terrace, Simon, uh, you can probably see this. Um, I, I have lots of pictures, of course, maybe hundreds. Um, but anyway, it's part of the secrets of the trade. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else got any more questions before I ask a couple more? Um, so I'll, I'll ask one. I think we, we were all on this big sustainability push at the moment. And I just wondered if you had managed to get any EPDs for the uh, finished panels at all? Uh, no. 
to answer uh, shortly. <laughs> Not a project I, I requirement at this stage, yeah. No, and, and it, it's, it is becoming a project requirement now, yeah. um, as, as you guys know, because we're talking to you when we're doing our specs at the moment. But I suppose the interesting thing, I suppose what I would have been interested in would, be, would have been to see the difference in the um, the values, for example, between the metal clad panels and the GRC clad panels. So, you know, I think as as we're going through the sustainability, um, you know, push at the moment and it will continue and it's growing momentum, I think we'll start to see more and more, uh, more and more how, how materials are going to influence our, you know, materials that are in better low embodied carbon um, are going to start influencing the architecture. So, uh, and, you know, just looking at it as a, as a holistic um, thing. So, yeah, I agree. I agree. Unfortunately, uh, um, as you said, design of this was 2016, 17. Know, we, were still, we were still not quite there, but I'm, I'm sure yeah, if we if we have to do this again, okay. we would look into this, of yeah. course. OK, well, if, if nobody's got any other questions, um, I'd like to say, Leandro, thank you so much. That's absolutely fascinating. Um, if, if we could have a copy of the um, presentation, you may want to take some of the images out, but something that maybe we can share. Oh, it's being recorded. Sorry, it's being recorded anyway. Don't. Um, so that that's fantastic. So hopefully some people can see that. And um, I'd just like to say thank you to Leandro. Um, all members, please keep an ear out. We are, uh, as I said at the beginning of the talk, please do um, respond to uh, a presentation if you want to provide one on a, a building of interest. We'd be great to hear from you. So I'd say, um, Leandro, thank you again. Thank you to Thornton Tomasetti and, and a fantastic project. I, I, I need to go down there and have a look. <laughs> yeah, and, thanks again, Nisha. Um, okay. Um, I'm sure we'll hear more about Ilona Rose, uh, but yeah, I encourage people if they're in London uh, to go see it. Thank you, and and Jack, thank you for for setting up um, all of the the, the call today.